Hello everyone, today I'll be doing something a bit different than my normal videos. I would like to showcase and demonstrate you why I believe these three new revamped items, or at least two new re revamped items, on top of a third item, is now like the most OP item combo. Like, it's gonna be the new Trinity. This is the new Trinity item combo. Alright, so the first being the revamped Thunderbelt. I'll give you a brief explanation as to what they changed. So with the new Thunderbelt, they removed the uh, mana regen, and now instead, you get a infinite scaling passive where every time you auto a hero, like so, you get one stack of your Thunderbolt and it has to refresh and every time you auto again, you get another stack. Each one of these stacks gives you one defense, armor, and magic resist. One point each. And infinitely stacking. So it's an infinite scaling items probably to help tanks, you know, scale better into the late game. Now, for... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. The damage on Thunderbolt scales on your defense as well. So with Clock, now they changed the passive where you don't get stacks as time goes by. Instead, it has a passive similar to Radiant, where the longer you are in combat and you're doing damage on heroes, the more stacks you get of defense and uh, like armor magic resist. So I believe since it says 4.5 plus 7, that is 11.5 defense per stack, stacking up to 6 times. So you have about 66, around 70 defense. We'll say 70. You have 70 armor and magic resist. And then Radiant is just Radiant where you can get up to 120 magic resist and max stacks. But Radiant's different than uh, Clock because Radiant is based on the damage you're taking when Clock is based on the damage you're dealing as for how to gain stacks. Outsider. Now, to get the explanation for now today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how Thunderbelt's damage synergizes so well with Radiant and the new clock that you can do absurd levels of damage being a full tank. And the Protect best hero the to demonstrate this is Hylos. Because Hylos is a constant fighting hero where you're going to be in the enemy's faces and getting yeah. Thunderbolt stacks all the time. So right here, barely any Thunderbolt stacks. So this demonstration me. isn't relative because by the time you're full build, you should have around like 20 to 30 stacks minimum, maybe a little under that if you're losing the game. So you'd have a bit more damage, but a normal auto damage, Thunderbolt is doing 439 damage. And this refreshes every few seconds. So you're on someone, you're gonna be on them over and over, smacking them every few times, stunning them, CCing them. And that did a lot more damage. Now I'll show you with full clock stacks, Clock is based on skill damage, sorry, not auto damage. So, with full clock stacks, let me do a damage bot here. I'm going to hit for almost 600. Now, to show this even more, we're going to make the AI max level, Protect full build, forests. Protect and wait for it to get full people. build. Well, I don't need to be full build to do a damage test here. Outsider. Now and tremble. So I'll put on a hard AI as well, so it keeps hitting me. Come on, give me a max stacks. I'll show you max stacks how much damage Radiant does with max stacks. You You're Thunderbolt, I mean. 700 damage. 100 more damage than I did with just the max clock stacks alone. So the max stacks of clock and Radiant Stay is giving me plus 200 true damage you on Thunderbolt. And this stronger. refreshes. Like every, I believe it's six seconds to cool down. Six seconds. Charge forward. Where is it? No, four nothing. seconds. Every four seconds, you are going to do an insane 700 true damage auto. And then the Xavier is a full build. Look, and now I'm just gonna ult and do this. And how is he gonna kill me? He's full build, and I've just been talking the whole time as he's been hitting me. That will happen in your actual games too. You will be like straight up unkillable. If you like, don't go versus hard counters. There are obvious some hard tank melters like uh, carry, Outsider. carry, X Borg, CC, all fantastic versus tanks, and they really screw you over. But you know, this three item combo, I just spamming Protect XP Hylos in RG, Protect and I, I'm people. Legend 2, 100% winner with like 15, 12 games. So insane. So moving on. Uh, I'll just tell you some other good heroes that you could build Thunderbolt on that work really well. Uh, you could build it on really any role that's like super aggressive, maybe a Kufra, because you have that enhanced auto, so that would get you a free Thunderbolt stack. Esme, 
I've gotten my personal highest stacks on playing XP as May. I got 61 stacks. That's 61 armor and magic resist. Uh, Uranus wouldn't be bad either, but I haven't tried yet. I'm trying to think any other tanks that would be good with the uh, Thunderbelts. Fredrin, first item, could probably work really well with the new Thunderbelt. But you don't get CDR, so maybe not. Hard to say. Haven't tried that personally. Uh, Edith. Edith is definitely good because she turns defense into damage. So that Thunderbolt stack would result in her doing a lot more magic damage. That is a very good item for Edith. Now, I also like to, like to talk about you know some of the other items now that I played a few days of the new patch and after day one of the new season. Uh, Malefic Gun, bad item. Not a good item. Only really good on Layla because Layla gets more damage with the range. And it's not that Malefic Gun is a bad item. It's more just like you're wasting an item slot buying it because other items are so much more valuable. Uh, I can give you like a few examples, but it's kind of hard to really explain without like demonstrating. So let's go to a marksman like Clint, right? Clint, you have your core items. You have your Berserkers. You have your Endless Battle. You have your uh, Malefic Roar. Sometimes people like going for penetration, like Blade of the Hep to Seize, but, and you know, you need a BOD for late game damage or Great Dragon Spear. Which one of these items would you replace for this Malefic Gun? Like, replacing none of these items would be worth it. It just isn't worth it. That's how. It, that's that's basically my point here. If you go to Marksman that you think would use Malefic Gun, it you'll find, you'll realize that you're just delaying items that will just give you more of an advantage than buying Malefic Gun. Malefic Gun gives you okay stats. You know, some of the physical attack, attack speed, life steal, but the just the passive just isn't there. You look at the stats, you think they're good stats, and every other item has similar stats to that as well. But what makes items so special is their passives. What actually like a special effect you get, or special unique effect you get from it. Not necessarily just the stats alone. Now on to the next item. We will go to Sky Piercer. Sky Piercer is a very good item. But there is a common misconception. You shouldn't, I, at least personally, I think you should never build this item first. Never. Unless you are fed with like at least two kills. Reason being, if you rush this item and you die early, buying it is a waste. If you're behind and using this item, you will feel like you're an item behind because the stats it gives without, you know, abusing the passive is pointless. Only 60 attack and some move speed. You want, you want to know what else gives 60 attack? Allegiance Sword. You know how much this costs? 900. 500 gold cheaper than this. 600 gold cheaper. So basically, you have Allegiance Sword and like an extra pair of tier 1 boots if you are behind and fed, like, fed. That's even cheaper. Like you're, wait, you're just wasting your money at that point. That's like a subtotal of 1100, 1200 gold if you include Allegiance Sword plus the boots. So essentially, you waste 300 gold on this item if you have no stacks. <laughs> And then you're delaying yourself of your next items. So only build this if you are fed or you have a few kills already to where you know you're going to get more kills. Uh, on to, let's say, crown. Crown, a fantastic item. It works so well with so many more heroes now because the passive is adaptive and you get some CDR. Also, like on a side note, it works very, very well for Claude and Odette because your ults still function while you are in the Winter Crown passive. I'm not sure what other heroes this applies for. Obviously, Alice as well. I don't know who other would I like be in mind for that category. But anywho, fantastic item. Fleeing time is probably the only time. Oh, like only time. Only item I don't have much experience with since the update. Fleeing time has always been a niche item in the first place. So like, it's more of just a ranked game item for like lower lower ranks, where it's like you can use it for fun if you want. I'm not really gonna comment much on it. You know, it's just an okay item. There are better items. Same same reasoning as Malefic Gun, I guess you could say. You could get it, but there are ultimately better options. Now for War Axe. I believe that's the last one, though. No, I know. No, defense items. Uh, War Axe. Good. You know, it hasn't changed that much. Honestly, I haven't noticed the spell vamp really too much. Uh... It, War Axe is War Axe. It's, it's, it's better than before now, I guess, because it's combined with Bloodlust. You don't need max stacks for the spell vamp. It's just, you know, War Axe is already a good item, so a good item just got better. <laughs> now for mage items. Wishing Lantern. This item is good 
but also not good. It's like the only hero that I know as of right now that's really good with this item is Xavier. Xavier and probably Kagura would probably be good with this item. But the reason why I'm saying Xavier is because Xavier is a poke hero that can do big chunks of poke. You need to be not only a poke hero, but a poke hero that can stay in a fight for long enough to do big chunks. I don't think this is a good item on Novaria because other items will get you more use than this. Because this only applies to every 800. Basically, your ball every time it hits. You might think, oh, my ball will do more damage every single time it hits. But it's like, it, if you look at Novaria's full build, you don't really have room for it. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to Navaria. Right here. Okay, we're not going to look at this. So, the new glowing wand's a must-have on every single mage. I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. But, so you kind of need book on Navaria, right? So, you'd be going, you know, book, glowing wand, and then either lightning trunch or divine, whichever you need. And then if you want damage, you're going this. The only reason I can see going this item is if they have like four tanks. So my point being is like it sounds cool on paper that it's good but you can already have a really optimal damage build and it only really caters to xavier because he can con like output consistent damage where he's always going to trigger that passive so if you want pure damage you're better off going a full mage build and you know mages typically want pure damage but in Xavier's case, it's better because he's consistently doing damage. That's a lot of damage. So he can actually make it work. Now, moving on to the next item being Glowing Wand. This is fucking broken. Insanely OP. They literally just grabbed Necklace and slapped it on Glowing Wand. They made an already good item, like twice as OP. This is your rush item on almost every single mage. Unless you're a CDR mage, you need book first. Or if you're like a hard burst mage who doesn't output skills consistent consistently. You have just like a one-shot combo, essentially. If you're like a one-shot combo, you don't want this because you're not going to make much use of it. Every single poke long-range mage will build this item first or second. It's just, you get so much value out of it. You get the constant glowing wand burn damage, and then on top of that, just a free anti-heal. Your tank doesn't have to build anti-heal first item. They can go for a tankier item because you get this item first. And it's just absurd because of that. Like... I don't know what they were thinking. They didn't even nerf the effect that much when they slapped it on. They just said, oh, you know, let's just buff mages for no fucking reason at all. Like, as if it isn't the most influential role in the game. When your mid lane wins, you control the whole map. Absurd to me. Absurd to me, honestly. But, um, yeah. And I've already explained Clock Destiny earlier in the video, but, you know, just to recap. It's a very niche item. I haven't tested it on mages. But I don't know how well it would do on mages because it's based on skill damage, not auto damage. And it's like, why? Like, are mages really meant to be tanky? Like, I think Alice, Alice could be good with this. You know, if you're like a bruiser Alice build, yeah. Uh, I've seen some Sicilians build it. It definitely makes you Sicilian a lot tankier. Okay. But like, for mages themselves, it's more for like a tanky mage item, which is what it's supposed to be a tanky mage item. There's just not a lot of tanky mages. Or at least it's not really optimally to build mages like that. And expert gloves, you know, niche item. Uh, I like that they did make it 500 gold and no precursor build into it. Because it's kind of like a, a risk reward, you know. You don't start with an item, so you can't be already having damage for this super early game snowball item. You know what I mean? It's like sort of like the counteract that. I like that a lot. They did that. Uh, anywho... You know, that's enough for this sort of review analysis to the update so far. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. Like the video, sub as well, all good stuff. Bye-bye.